Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. Today I am going to try color again. But just a different shade of green. That last shade of green was a little too much for me, so I'm gonna go with a lighter shade of green. This is a cabinet that is that was in my daughter's room for a while. I don't think the color is reading very well on camera. It is a bright color. So bringing it out into the rest of our house is not going to work. So I am going to try green on top of this. I did paint this way back in the day. I'm not a super fan of the, of the color of the wood that came through. So I'm going to see what I'm going to do about that color. I painted this color. It worked in my daughter's room for a while. But now it's time to reuse it. I hope you enjoy. Bye. <laughs> So here's a picture of the before. You can kind of see that it's a very light turquoise color. I know it's not that crazy of a color, but I'm toning it down. First, I'm going to paint the back two times with the white Rust-Oleum chalked paint. It's just what I have on hand. And then I'm gonna go over the rest of it with this Waverly Celery color. The good thing is these colors go together and you'll see later when I rub it back that some of this turquoisey mint color can kind of come through and it looks good together. But the celery helps tone down the piece which is really what I'm looking to do. You can see on this side here how the celery green just really tones the piece down. And I look, I know that these colors are not that different, but the takeaway here is if you have something in your house and it, it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, to try again. And you can see there's a much greener tone to this now. And Apparently Henry just does not like sanding. I don't know if he thinks the sandpaper is his toy, but he does not like the motion. He does not like the noise. He does not like the sandpaper. So he had a little time in his kennel so I could finish this project. So here I'm just kind of lightly going over some of the corners that would naturally wear. And the fun part is that blue kind of peeked through, which goes well with the green. So it made it this piece look multi-dimensional while the whole thing was very toned down, which was again what my plan was. I used to have bright colors in my house for a very long time, like the bright teals and yellows, and then I just said no more color. So here I'm using um, a drop cloth and a wet drop cloth and just wet distressing. As you can see that green, when it comes back, sometimes it goes to the wood and sometimes that blue will kind of come through. So with this effect, you can have a lot more control than you can with the sandpaper. This next part is what I think 
makes this piece the most special. This is the original wall stamp by Lori Steinfeld. I met this lady at the Pinners Conference and she is just awesome. She created this product because she was custom doing homes and these gorgeous homes in California and needed a wall stamp that she could use over and over again. So technically you're supposed to roll it on but I had very little paint left so I just painted it on and then made sure I rubbed every piece. I wasn't looking for perfection. I was just looking to cover the back of it to make it look like wallpaper. And as you can see from this visual right here, the edges are, look kind of darker than the center, but that can be fixed um, at the end with some wet distressing. So I'm just covering the back as if it was wallpaper. And then on the bottom row, I am just going to put paint on the bottom half just to cover it. You won't be able to tell. These patterns are not so specific that you've got to match them all up. If it was on a wall, I would, but this is just the bottom of a cabinet. So this is after stamping. And I didn't get a video of it, but I took that wet drop cloth and just rubbed those edges in wet distressed so that it wasn't showing anymore. Next, I used Minwax Finishing Wax. And just, especially on the top, applied it liberally. On the rest of the piece, I put it on there but the top is where you could get marks and dents. So I did two or three coats on the top here. You just apply, apply it liberally so that it gets on in all the crevices. And then I used a drop cloth to buff it. I actually waited overnight just because of the timing. And you could tell that it had very much cured and it just kind of shined the wax just like you would be waxing a car. So here is the finished piece. I think that backdrop really takes it up a notch, makes it look nice and precious. So that's it for this week's video. I know that the transformation between the colors was not super drastic, but I wanted to encourage you to look around for a piece that's bothering you or needs to be refreshed, just updated and maybe even do some type of stamp or stencil on the back to upgrade your project. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you like this kind of content, I would love it if you would subscribe and I will see you again next week. Bye.